So we now come to the big one, the big lie. The President of the United States looking the American public in its TVI saying, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I honestly believe that lie changed the essential quality of the relationship between the press and the presidency and keeps Bill Clinton from taking place alongside our greatest presidents. We listen to presidents now thinking that that same feeling that, uh, that, that, that that lie is not going to ever end. He was finally a court forced, Nick, uh, Clinton was, to acknowledge having knowingly violated Judge Wright's discovery orders in my deposition in that case. This is the Paula Jones case. I, he didn't say the word lie, and never has to this day. I tried to walk a fine line between acting lawfully and testifying falsely. Well, what the hell is the point of trying to look for it? <laughs> But I now recognize that I did not fully accomplish this goal. <laughs> you believe it really, I mean, whatever that means. And that certain of my responses to questions about Lewinsky were false, not lied, but he did not lie. And his lawyer, David Kendall, who I think for a time, uh, Don, you can tell us, represented the Washington Post, he may still, keeps saying he did not lie. We have not admitted he lied, and do not do so today. He gave evasive and misleading testimony. It's not intentional falsification. Bull. <laughs> the President of the United States admits his responses under oath to questions were false. He admits his testimony was evasive and misleading, but he did not lie. What the hell did he do then? What was all the fuss about? I think I'd like to wait for history to give uh, President Bush his best shot at the truth. Weapons of mass destruction are going to give him a lot of trouble for sure. And his economic predictions have gone from rosy to false uh, too often, perhaps, for his own pleasure, in the blink of an eye. While presidents seem to be sucked into the swamp of lying, the big shots of American business are comfortably in step right behind them. Will any of you ever forget the pictures of the tobacco companies, highest executives, on their feet, right hands raised, swearing that none of them, not one, I think, were, I, I remember sort of seven or eight of them, uh, none of them had any documentation of the devastating damage that tobacco was harmful to the country's health. That's what they swore to under oath in the various congressional inquiries. One by one, they lied. They just lied. And remind me which of them have been prosecuted for lying. Okay, we got Martha Stewart and the guy who led her down the garden path in clone President Sam Waxel. Martha Stewart made, uh, saved herself 40 grand these other guys are talking about 60 million. That's great, we got Martha. The crisis is over. A few Enron types have been induced to plead guilty and rat out a few more. But not to worry, Martha Stewart will soon be wearing stripes. But no way is that enough to rid this town and this country of this dangerous blot on our collective escutcheon. Where lies the truth? That's the question that pulled all of us reporters into the business as it propelled Diogenes through the streets of Athens looking for an honest man. I take comfort as always in Walter Lippmann's great prediction that in a democracy, the truth will emerge. It takes forever sometimes, and at least it seems that way, but it does emerge. Thanks to people like Herb Block, just, just incidentally. Thanks to people like Herb Block. And any relaxation by the press will be extremely costly to this democracy. Thank you very much for listening to me.